You'll quit streaming. With hundreds of thousands of streamers going live every month, the odds are against you. But the number one reason most streamers quit is actually completely preventable. It's called the spotlight effect, and it affects every single person on the planet. It stops you doing all the things you want to do, not just in content creation, but, well, in life. The idea of the spotlight effect is simple. It's the feeling like you've been pushed out onto a stage. The spotlight has hit you and the entire audience is sat quietly judging every action you do. You're breathing manually. You're aware of your tongue resting on your teeth and you don't know what to do with your hands. I learned about the spotlight effect about four years ago when I was diagnosed with an acute anxiety condition. All the things I loved to do, I couldn't out of the intense fear of being judged. And well, four years later, some therapy and a lot of effort every single day, I am a content creator living my dream job as a content creator. So let me show you the five ways I did this. Starting is always the hardest part of anything, especially when you're nervous or care about it. It's no different for streaming or making videos. When you actually think about how much work goes into growing a stream, it becomes incredibly daunting. For example, streaming three times a week, every week for four plus hours, coming up with clickable, engaging ideas for every stream, taking those streams and editing them into TikTok shorts and full YouTube videos so that you can actually grow. And then doing that endlessly on repeat for years years without any guarantee you'll see growth is, it's a lot, okay? This hurdle makes most creators never click go live. They give up before they even begin. But taking a big task like making a YouTube video and making it achievable is surprisingly easy. I want you to imagine making a video is the same as one of the most painful things a human can do to themselves going for a run. When you go for a run, you don't just get up and start sprinting straight out of the door, do you? No, you start by putting on our running shorts. Then you put on one shoe at a time. We pick up our keys, step outside. We walk 30 steps down the road. Then we walk another 30 steps. Maybe we start walking a little bit faster for the next 30. We build up to a jog until the end of the road. Now we just have to run to the next corner. And if we continue to break down every step into small achievable goals, goals that we control, then eventually we turn around and we see how far we've come. You're not streaming for three years. You're not making a video. You're sitting down to write three ideas. Then you're coming up with the titles for each, writing just the intro for one of them. And eventually you'll turn around and see how far you've come. But first you have to put your running shorts on, which is surprisingly easy. So next time you have a big task, ask yourself, what are my running shorts? And I really wanna know this as well. So tell me in the comments, what is the small achievable task that you are going to complete? There is a major issue with the running shorts method though, sadly. Just because you can start your project doesn't mean you can finish it. And then, well, start the next project and then finish that. And well, loop that forever and you have content creation as a job or hobby. That's it. It's an endless loop of self-motivated work with very little external reward. Motivation is strange because we all believe it's a state of mind we have to wait for, but you'd be wrong. Motivation is simply the reason to do something. What you actually need is discipline, which I do not have. I am lazy, that is a fundamental trait of who I am. So I have had to develop dozens of ways to actually get work done. And the first is the Seinfeld strategy, which I didn't develop, I stole. Jerry Seinfeld had a rule that every day he had to write jokes for 30 minutes. It didn't matter if what he wrote was good, funny, or clever. He simply had to do it every single day. And every day he did this, he crossed off a square on a calendar. This physical act of crossing off a square slowly gave him a streak. And as he built his streak further, the idea of breaking that streak by missing a day becomes impossible. You build a routine and the longer you stick to it, the harder it is to break. I do this either on a whiteboard for some projects like my daily writing, or I use an app called Streaks, which I simply set the task up and then tick it when it's done. The problem with this, at least for a fundamental lazy person like me is how do I trick my brain into working when I sit down? After all, it's one thing to say I can write bad jokes daily to keep the streak, but if I'm only ever putting in the minimal effort by writing bad jokes, well, I still won't get anywhere. I use what I call work triggers. A trigger that used to work for me, but doesn't anymore because I have a newborn daughter is setting a specific time every day to work on a specific task. Let's say I'm most awake, alert, or feel like I'm most motivated to work at around 11 a.m. every day. Then at 11 a.m. every day, I'm gonna write stream ideas for 30 minutes. 
The more I do this, the easier it will be and the better quality work I'll start to do because I just get into that routine. But I don't have the luxury of a set schedule. So instead, two tricks that work really well for me are sensory triggers and hourglass triggers. When I'm struggling to put words on a page or film a video and I can't find my running shorts, I take this hourglass and say, for the next 15 minutes, I am going to work nonstop without opening Twitter, checking my phone or whatever it is. I then flip it and I begin. Almost every single time I do this, I struggle for the first few minutes, but eventually I'll look back at that hourglass and I'll realize it's done, it stopped. Usually a long time ago as well, and I've been working for a very good stretch without any interruptions. This is very similar to the running shorts, except it uses shorter time-based goals instead of actions you have to complete. And this works great alongside what I call sensory triggers. You see, a very ethically questionable scientist called Pavlov once trained dogs to salivate and become hungry at the sound of a bell ringing by ringing the bell every time he fed them. Now, I'm not calling you a dog, but your little lizard brain is weirdly susceptible to this. Personally, every time I sat down to work, I used to make myself a coffee, and it was the only time I actually drank coffee. So by connecting the taste of coffee with work, I was able to quickly shift from feeling lazy or demotivated to, well, feeling like I had to get to work. But then I reached my final year of university and I started having to drink coffee nonstop just to simply survive, which kind of ruined the effect. So I tried switching to green tea and only drinking green tea to trick my brain. But tea tastes like ass and let's be real, you tea drinkers know it sucks. So instead, now I don't use drinks, I use music. Every time I sit down to work, I use the same playlist and it has the exact same effect. And I just so happen to have a link in the description to that playlist as well as to today's sponsor, Epidemic Sound. The problem with music especially music designed for videos and streams is that they all sound cheap. Like if you listen to a lot of the music that's meant to be put as background tracks for streams, then it doesn't actually sound like real music. It's not music you'd listen to in a day to day. And I think that really detracts from your content when you use music like that. But the reason I use Epidemic Sound pretty much exclusively and have for the past three years is because I listen to their music every day because it's real music. So right now you can use the link in the description to get a free trial to Epidemic Sound that has over 45 5,000 songs and over 90,000 sound effects, which is good because I use about four to six songs per video on average. So you need a lot of them. And you'd be surprised just how many sound effects I have to use to keep you guys watching and not get bored. Don't worry though, I do it very subtly. And you too can use actual music to make your videos and streams more engaging. And any content you make using the free trial will stay completely monetized if you choose not to continue after the trial. So in short, you can use real music to make better content for free. And even if you don't wanna pay for it, you can still listen to all of their music while you work on their YouTube channels or with my playlist of work music. Now, the tip after this one, I think is what changed my life and it's weird and will probably scare you off. So first, let's talk about embarrassment or I guess judgment because we all do dumb things. I know that almost my entire time in the shower these days is spent wincing in pain as I remember getting an erection in high school because I was so nervous to read my essay out to the whole school. And it's moments like this that stop you from being the best creator you can. Most people never start creating or they stop too early because it's embarrassing to put your heart into something and get no views. But I wanna show you something. Hello, we accidentally did something terrible with Super Smash Brothers Melee. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hello, Joey. Uh -huh. Oh, there it is. Blast those forearms. Look at that. It's a rogue legacy. It's, uh, I think it's an indie game. I guess, because uh, it's got pixels. All right, it's me, video game donkey. Uh, I'm gonna beat this whole Battletoad game in one shot. Basically, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna die once, and I'm off to a pretty good start. I often go back and watch the very first videos of myself and my favorite creators because it helps me realize that we all need to start somewhere. And I highly recommend doing this because when you do, you'll see that Mr. Beast has hundreds of undeniably shit videos. They are dog water garbage videos. And you'll slowly see him learn that to increase click rate and get more views, he just needs to reference large sums of money. No, seriously. So next time you're worried, take a breath and remind yourself that everyone starts somewhere. You're not 
comparing yourself to Mr. Beast now, but instead to who he was when he started. And then for the final tip, remind yourself, you don't fucking matter. No, seriously, I want you to repeat after me. Nobody cares about me because every single person on the planet is so self-involved, worrying about their own spotlight, worrying about how they got an erection at school assembly, worrying that they're only gonna be judged, that I can do literally whatever I want. It doesn't matter because the worst case scenario is nobody ever sees it, which means I lose nothing. That ended up being a bit too long to repeat. So maybe we just stick with, nobody cares about me. They're all too busy worrying about themselves. In short, nobody has time to think about you as much as you think they do. So just try to enjoy making content, enjoy your time here and make things you're proud of. Like this video here, it's all about how I mastered seven skills in content creation in seven days. And I'm really proud of it.